<laughs> no, yeah, I feel great. I feel great. I feel really good. You guys, everybody, everybody in the media has been really great, great to me. So making this process really easy. Yeah. How has the whole week panned out? I mean, the whole thing, did you have, you know, visions into your head of what it was going to be like and has it played out the way you saw it or has it just been totally new? No, you know, actually at first I, w I thought, you know, man, doing, doing the media stuff, getting in front of the camera, all that stuff. I, I had my concerns about it, but I think, I think after my first, my first interview on, uh, on Fox Sports 1, I was like, this is easy. You just got to be yourself, you know? So I, I've, had, I've had fun with it. So I'm enjoying the ride. Yeah. A lot of us look at this for you as kind of one of those no-lose type situations. Is that true? I mean, is there a real no-lose situation where no matter what the outcome is, you're still a winner? Or do you feel like, no, I could go in there and, and have a really bad night and it'd be terrible? That, you know, that, that's, that's not my mindset at all. You know, there, there's definitely a, a lose situation. You know, I, I come in here expecting to get the win. And that, that's, that's the win I want. You know, no matter how it comes, that, that's, that's, my, that's my ultimate goal coming in here is, is getting the win. I, I, I would have never call, you know, called out Daniel and said, hey, let's have a fight. If I didn't truly believe that I could win. Yeah. And Daniel did say he had a little concern with what you said, some of the comments he said. He thought maybe, didn't, didn't say cheap shot, but he thought, you know, there were some personal things that were going on that you knew about that you wish, you know, that he wishes maybe you would have left alone. Do you have any regrets at all that maybe you, you, you took it a little too far? No, I think, I think that that's a business. You know, we, we need to we need to come out here and we're getting in a fight. <laughs> I mean, that's that's about as raw as it gets. So whatever whatever leading up to that is, I feel like it's pretty fair game. You took this obviously on very short notice. Uh, how's the weight cut going for you? Oh, great, great. I feel good. I was I was uh, I needed something to eat while I was while I was uh, coming into this workout. So I'm. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty, my weight's pretty good. I'm, no worries there. And have you taken a look at the odds or, and what are your thoughts on what somebody, they're giving somebody you? Somebody told me the odds are pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Yeah, they have you at, uh, minus eight, 85, I believe right now. Yeah, it's 15 like, to one. Okay. Oh, 15 to one. I like that better. So place your bets. You now, yourself? <laughs> I would love to. Yeah. Yeah. I just don't have any money. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I, I, I'm, uh, I, I'm an underdog kind of guy, you know, that, that's my background. So, I've always I'm coming into everything as the underdog, and, and I'm always surprising people. So I'm, uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I feel I feel comfortable there. Short short notice taking the fight on short notice. I mean, have you ever done anything like that before? Because this is a, this is huge. Well, our our philosophy is um, just just because it was so difficult to get fights, um, we just said we're always going to be always trained to be ready for this type of situation. You know, however far fetched it was. That, that was in our game plan so I've I've been I've been training hard I mean obviously you know you take your take your breaks when you need it you know you get banged up here and there but I mean I feel like I feel like I've been through a camp myself you know it's it, that's that's not the issue and I, and I think just an overall you know living a healthy lifestyle and, and just having that hunger for for this opportunity that, that's all that's all I need any concern being that you haven't fought since 2013 that maybe you're going to be a little rusty plus the jitters on top of that all of it compiled that might affect you do you think that might happen yeah i mean uh, there's always there's always that component you know but i i think I, i've been i've been in front of a, a crowd you know like this similar to this plenty of times and I, i've i've usually performed pretty well so i mean yeah the the time off for sure but We've been training hard. We've been putting ourselves in in scenarios to you know to to make it make it like competition. So I, I'm not I'm not worried about it. And and you know even if I have a couple jitters, if I if I get nervous and you know maybe lose a lose a, my breath here or there, I still I still think I'm better off than than Daniel coming down coming down from so much weight and and just you know his history of kind of being that guy that likes to likes to take a take a break here and there. <laughs> An advantage knowing him that you've, you've worked with him before yeah absolutely I mean obviously I haven't I haven't um, trained MMA with him but I know the guy I know the guy pretty well and I feel like I can exploit his weaknesses pretty easily Pat, has your yeah. former employer at all contacted you after all the attention they've received she yes yeah, yeah they have it they've been great you know I I, I told you know I, I kind of uh, I told him there's no hard feelings you know, it's that's just that's kind of the way it goes, and, and I, I also thank them for uh, for for the opportunity to work for them. Is w without them, I would be uh, who knows what I'd be doing right now. <laughs> you know, I was I was about as broke as you could get. So, no hard feelings. <laughs> I 
understand that you started training MMA about four years ago. What was the transition like for you coming from a wrestling background? And where do you, where kind of level do you think you're at right now? Um, the, the transition came pretty easily. You know, at first, I, I never really had uh, had thoughts of getting into this. Um, a couple a couple guys I knew from from school and from after school training training wrestling were getting into it. They had me come out to work out with them just you know keep keep their wrestling sharp when I was still I was still competing wrestling at the time and you know here and there I'd get they'd say oh why don't you go with the boxing coach here why don't you go with our Muay Thai guy and it just it all came really really easily to me and um I I, I felt like the, the transition was really easy and then I, at, at a certain point I kind of I looked I looked back on everything and just said man, you know I, I really think I really think this could be for me you know, and at first, at first I didn't, but I was like, man, this this could be for me. And then once, once I made up my mind, I w- you know, I, I invested, you know, all the way in, and said this is this is what I'm going to do. And when I make up my mind to do something, it's a it's a pretty tough thing to to stop or to get in the way of. A lot of people are very curious about the shirt, the Dirk in here. Uh, I read, did some reading, found out that that's your middle name, yeah. and uh, is that also the nickname? And can you explain this whole uh, character there? You got your your shirt representing with you. Yeah, no, I, th- I just think, I just think it's fun. Durkin was a name that I, I kind of got picked on for when I was a kid. It's my middle name, and uh, you know, I'm probably some of you guys have probably never heard of that before. And um, you know, I always I hated it growing up, just because just because of that. And then, you know, slowly I kind of was like, you know, I, I like this. It's different. And I think I think too, you know, I come in here with like some name like the Destroyer or whatever. You know, I think that's 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 kind of lame. You know, I want to I want to continue being different. Is that a family name? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Win or lose? Do you have a, a post fight plan? Did the UFC talk to you about your options? Win or lose? Obviously, if you win. Yeah. Yeah. We we, we fight. We signed a, a multi fight deal with them. So yeah. So you're gonna be in the light heavy. You're, you're not going anywhere for. for yeah. Fight, yeah. Exactly. Okay. I'm here to stay. Why would you have wrestled at two, you know, in the 265, and then you know do MMA at 205? It would seem like a, you know, a pretty tough cut. You lose a lot on your. Um, you know what? Actually, it was tougher to tougher to stay stay at heavyweight. I would, I think, you know, 220, 225 is, is my natural weight, and all, all through college, just just because, you know, it's where they needed me. My my older brother was wrestled 197, so it's kind of like, hey, you know, you're gonna wrestle off with your older brother, or are you gonna you can make some changes, so I went up to heavyweight, and um, you know, really, put, I put a lot of work into it. And over over five years, I, I put on 50 pounds, and um, it was it was it was hard it was hard to keep on. After I stayed at heavyweight for another four years uh, internationally, and then as soon as I was as soon as I was on my way out of wrestling, I just you know I said you know I, mean, I just need a break from eating. This is too. It's too hard. So as soon as as soon as I did that, I, I kind of came back down to my, my normal weight, and um, I just thought, you know, going to heavyweight would be, just be crazy. So. You know, I've heard boxers that have moved up. You know, Manny Pacquiao comes to mind where he had to eat 9,000 calories a day to maintain 140 something. Like, yeah. what were you at to try to since your weight would be normally 220 to get to 250 or 260? Like, how much were you eating a day? I well to maintain that. Yeah. It, okay, I'll put it in perspective. In, in college, I would go. I would eat breakfast, work out, go to the dining hall, and dining hall is like, eat all you can eat, and I'd be like, full, full, like totally full every time I went in there. So I would go, I would eat breakfast, I would, I would have a you know protein shake or whatever, as a snack. Then I'd go to lunch, eat everything I could, and just like barely struggle to get out of there, and go work out in the afternoon, have dinner, same thing, and just like it just, I, I couldn't even put a number on it, but it was just. It was basically as much as I could eat without throwing up. <laughs> and so you've got a chance to feel the power of heavyweights, you know, and the explosiveness they had compared to now in MMA, the explosiveness of 205 pounders. Mm-hmm. What is the difference, and do you feel that in any way makes you more ready to, you know, if you get clipped on the chin by a 205 or on Saturday night, to take it compared to, you know, if it had been a heavyweight? Well, I, th- I think more importantly, I, I know what it's like to come from from heavyweight down to 205. And, I, and um, it took it took quite an adjustment. Um, you know, you, you don't have that horsepower behind you, and you, you kind of have to be you have to be a little slicker with what you're doing. You know, you got to have you got to really employ that technique. And I, I think, you know, it, it, it's it's going to be a shock um, 
to Daniel's system. Uh, you know, yeah, he's dealing with bigger guys, but he's not going to be as fast anymore, and he's not going to have that, you know, as much behind what he's doing. So I, th I think that's 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 more of a, a realistic view of that, that scene. Daniel, Daniel told us earlier that you have shifty eyes, and that means you're not ready for this fight. Shifty eyes. Shifty eyes. What do you think of that? I don't know. I don't really know what that means. I, I, I don't really know what the wrestling code is either, so I, I don't know. He, he he seems to have all these ideas that I have no, I don't know anything about. But <laughs> he said he's going to come at you as soon as the bell and, and break you down. Do you think that's a good strategy? You know, with maybe, for, for him? For him dropping down, do you think that's a good strategy? Um to come in right out and try to break you the first round? No, because he's he's just going to tire out. Yeah. He's going to waste all that energy right up front, and I mean, that, that's exactly what I want him to do. <laughs> How rare is it for a walk-on to become an All-American? Does it happen occasionally, or, or is it like extremely rare circumstance? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I, I, I think, I, I think I, I'm, I've known of a couple other guys to do it, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I think I think it's a pretty rare thing because you, you just you know you coming in as a walk on you have you have a bunch of other guys the you know you blue chip recruits getting you know getting the attention and it's kind of you just need to have that have that grind mentality like okay I'm just gonna I'm just gonna get to work and and hope hope I get the attention at some point and, and you know get that little extra edge I need so I, I'm not sure how often how often it, it happens but you know I, I can tell you it was pretty difficult. <laughs> Hey, would this be the first time for a fight you've ever walked out first? That probably, right? Um, yeah, yeah, I think so, actually. Yeah. But what, what's the first thing you're gonna buy with your show and possibly win money? <laughs> you said you're broke, so. You I, yeah. yeah. Well, I think the first the first thing I need is I need to I need to buy a car again. Yeah. You know, getting rid of getting rid of my car was was tough to do. <laughs> you know, especially living in Orange County, that's kind of you know you, you get that's how you get around. And um, yeah, I, I like I like riding my bike, but not that much. Uh, I like a, I like a hatchback. hatchback. Yeah, the bike rack on the top. Yeah, but I I mean I would say my ultimate fantasy car would be a Tesla. <laughs> when you when you started your social media campaign, basically to get this fight, did you think you'd actually get it, or were you just trying to get on the UFC's radar? Um, no, I mean I I thought there was a chance. You know, and, but just just given the history, but yeah, it was it was definitely a long shot. But you know, I, like I said, it wasn't it wasn't something like, hey, I want this, and then oh no, I have it. You know, it was it was uh, you know I I got the message, or I saw you know I saw, I saw the headline, and um, I just immediately thought I'll t I would take that fight, <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> Kind of like the way this played out. I mean, you're four and zero. Oh, um, by by all regards, you you've kind of leapfrogged a lot of people. But this ten day window, you don't really have time to think about it. It's like, all right, your first interview is on Fox Sports, not here with us. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got everything has been big time for you, and you really don't have time to think about it. So do you kind of like that? Yeah, I think so too. I, I think I think um, overthinking a situation is a, is a big deal, especially in this in this game. Um, you know, you have you have what, eight, 12 weeks to think about your opponent and, you know, overanalyze everything. So I think, yeah, I mean, nine days is perfect. Especially if it stakes. It's a big deal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You mentioned you didn't know about this so-called wrestler's code. So you haven't been hearing from wrestlers like, hey, what are you doing? No, I haven't. Yeah, the wrestling community haven't, hasn't uh, had, a, had a big outcry for, <laughs> uh, on the wrestling code thing. But. Were, you, were you surprised to hear that from him, that, you know, you're breaking this huge code that you didn't really know <laughs> A little bit, but I, I think it was just kind of him backpedaling and not, you know, I don't know, I don't really know what to say here, but I got to come up with something. So. What, what was your uh, specialty as far as making coffee? What was the best thing that you made? <laughs> I tell I tell everybody that the heart the heart latte was my specialty, <laughs> but um, I think I don't know. I've only made a couple of those. So. <laughs> I was more of like the face in the window in the drive-through window, greeting you know greeting all the uh, all the ladies. What was the secret to the croissant being so flaky and brown? Well, wow, that, well, that, that's the other thing. I was, I was the baker, so I, uh, I had a little, you know, a hand in, in all that stuff. Have you talked to, to Starbucks about sponsoring you? It'd be, it'd be great to have Starbucks. Yeah, that would, that would be great. I am, but that's a great idea. Thank you. Thanks, <laughs> Dan. Cool. Thank you. Good? Thank you. All right. Thank thanks, you. guys.